Well, hello there, person. Let's check out what's new with Wraithbinder. First of all, we've got these super duper new hit point and matter point bobbles full of rotating liquid and bubbles and little waves and sloshing animations and all this other stuff. I'm really, really happy about how these turned out. Working on these all week. Um, so basically what we have here um, is, let's go ahead and like lose a little bit of health. And you can see that um, the hit point bobble, gosh, I almost want to turn off my keys here for a second. Let's turn this off. Turn this in the way the whole time. That's better. So when, when I get hurt, it's gonna flash the old animations or the old hit point value and then it lets go of it with a, um, a blending of two different kinds of easing functions. There's a bounce ease and an exponential ease in there that make it really kind of like almost look like it's sloshing while it's refilling or whether it's, or whether it's draining. So um, let's like refill a little bit of health there, see? And we lose some and it has that white, that white slash of light there, that white slash of liquid. So um, let's take a look at some of the artwork that goes behind all this that makes up these hit point bobbles um, look the way they do and all that. Oh, it also see when you do the shield, it uses that same sort of white bar to show how much is shielded. We're adding in 16 hit points worth of damage that the player can take with that shield up like that. So that's why it's, it, the top becomes white. And of course, as I run around and use matter points, the matter slowly drains. And then I can get it back by harvesting it here from this stone. The matter, of course, is in blue and the health is in red. Sort of a, just a, you know, it's such a, um, a intuitive thing now for a person to expect red to be health and blue to be mana. Or in this game, it's matter points, but it's basically the same thing as mana. So that's why it's red and blue. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the and the art behind this. Um, we've got so here's the hit point bobble. Basically, here's its background. It has like sort of a background thing that gives it this three dimensional feel. Uh, this this curve right here gives it that three D feel. And then this is the foreground for the hit points, and here's the foreground for the matter. It's just a little tiny bit different. You can see the bottom here has some different pixel art going on um, in each one of these. And then there's a, you don't really see it here because it's, I gotta enable this gray background, but you can see there's a little bit of shine too. And the shine is different for each one of these bobbles. That was fun just, you know, styling that out and making each one of those look really, really good. Um, and then we've got all these little bubbles that are keep on popping up inside the, uh, inside the bobble, the bubbles in the bobble. And uh, here's one of them, right? So it's floating, floating, floating. And then when it hits the top of the liquid, it pops like this. And I've got four different animations for all these bubbles, all unique. So that's what enables them to kind of look really nice. There's the tiniest bubble right there. And we've also got these waves that are swirling around on top of the liquid, which gives it this sort of slosh, this really cool sloshing effect and swirling effect too. Here's one of the waves. This is being run at like uh, pretty slow. You know, it's being run at 0.1 seconds per frame, but actually in the game it's ran a lot faster than that, so it looks a lot, a lot faster and nicer. But there's two of these wave animations too. Uh, and then we've also got this is the this is what I just added today. I love this little part here. This is this sort of like uh, let's go ahead and we'll run it again. I can show you what I'm talking about as as the hit point liquid is just sitting there, it's actually sort of swirling and tur just turning around. You can see this sort of effect, like it's almost like a marble or some kind of sphere that's rotating. And uh, I wanted it, I wanted this art to look mesmerizing in a way, and that's that's what kind of gives it the, the mis mesmerizing effect to me. There's actually 120 frames per second there rendered out um, for for sort of that this marble texture and I'll show you how that all kind of works basically I created this sort of uh, albedo texture or a, or a texture that goes on top of 
um, a sphere. And it just looks like this. I just drew in some squiggles with my old, good old trusty tablet and then threw it onto this sphere here. So I, I looked up actually, um, I'm still kind of learning how Blender works. Um, I've been more of a pixel artist in the past and stuff like that, but uh, Blender's really useful. So what I did here is I created this project here in Blender with a sphere, mapped on this texture here, gave it sort of this cone lighting and played around a ton with all of the output settings so that I could get a nice, as close to pixel art as I could. And I found that basically if I turn the sampling down to only one sample per pixel, and if I turn the filter size down to zero on the film type, and a few other things here, it's even rendering at a really, really low resolution. Um, but I can go and render a single image, and you can see this is what it looks like. Before, it looked really... Um, anti-alias the edges were all blurry and it was just way smoother looking and I wanted to go for more of a pixel art 256 color ish look so that's what this is and then when it gets actually thrown into the game the shader will take away all these all these little tiny variations in value right here these these tiny gray differences in gray they all get washed into the same exact color in the shader the shader is uses a technique called color banding and dithering to uh, create sort of a 256 color look. So even though this is sort of like using lots of variations of gray here, it turns into just using two or three colors in the game. And let's just run it again. You can see what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Remember there was a ton of, of gradation there in that, in that sphere. And here in the game, we've basically almost got nothing. And it, it, it looks really good to my eye because we've got, it looks more 256 color-ish and just kind of goes with the aesthetic of the game. So, yeah, really happy with how those turned out. Um, and you can even see here in this uh, in Blender, I can animate this in Blender, and you can see this is basically the animation. It's just rotating the sphere. That's all there is to it. It's just going from one rotation Z to 360 degrees later Z. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I'm going to make the game Wraithbinder better and better till the day it comes out. And soon you'll be able to play with me. It's 8-player um, hack and slash Wraithbinder. So thanks for watching this video. And we'll catch you on the next one.